Homesteading is a beautiful and simple way that we like to live our life. You still need a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. Especially if you want to be comfortable while you're outside here. We like getting back to basics, but you gotta water your animals, you gotta feed your animals, and you don't want to get frostbite while you're out doing it. After homesteading for a decade, we have tried all sorts of clothing, equipment, tools, and we'd like to share some of them with you every year so you know what we give our thumbs up to, things we spent our own money on that have lasted for years, that are durable, and that somebody you love would love to get as a present, even if it's you getting yourself a present. This video will share 10 different items we love across these different categories, home, <laughs> We're talking about clothing, tools, livestock, and kitchen equipment. Let's get into it. Buckets. Always buy buckets. Yeah. Before we dive into today's gear list, I just want to let you know that we have links below to all the gear we mentioned. They're affiliate links. If you buy something through them, we make a small amount of money from your purchase, but it doesn't cost you a penny extra. So you kind of help support the Homesteady channel while making a purchase of something that you wanted or needed. So it's a win-win for all of us. And even if you don't buy any of the stuff we share about in today's video, if you just type in amsteady.com before going to Amazon to do any of your Black Friday shopping or whatever shopping period, we make a little affiliate bonus for sending you there. Helps us make these videos. So something to remember. Let's get into our list. The first item of the year that we're gonna share is a repeat, and it's a repeat because it's a literal life changer. I have to thank Kay, she convinced me to get these. I, I did, it took me a few years to actually convince him. I didn't think I would like insulated overalls. Cause you run hot, right? You're yeah. warm hot. But winter in Pennsylvania is cold. It's so cold and the nice thing, as you can see, I'm wearing my pajamas. We say this and every time we mention these overalls. That's like the big good When you thing. see us in these overalls, it's only pajamas underneath. Maybe for you, not for me. You know why? why? I get hate down them and then my pajamas have hay in them and I do not like that. Oh, fair enough. Our insulated overalls of choice are the Carhartt overalls. They're durable, rugged. They have a nice couple pockets here. I always keep one of the other items we're gonna talk about today. My knife in there as well as whatever else we need. Oftentimes you'll see Kay has shots in there. These kind of shots? No, these kind of shots. Medicine for animals, you know, whatever our chores are for the day. Nice rugged straps, they don't slide on you. Nothing gets more irritating than having to constantly adjust your straps on your overalls. They have zippers on the side which allow you to put them on or take them off while still wearing boots. Some days you go out and it's cold outside but then you get working and you work up a sweat and instead of having to pop your boots off to take the overalls off, well, you can just take the overalls off. So that's a nice feature. Obviously, the insulation factor is huge. The fact that we stay warm when it's really, really cold out there just puts us in a better mood when we're doing chores throughout the winter. He liked these so much that he ended up getting the kids each pair too. The two older kids. Yeah. And they'll be handed down for, from bigger out of those. So the next kid will get that pair and then that pair. And because they're very, very durable. Yeah, we've already handed down a pair of kid overalls to the next kid. So. Best reason to get a pair of homestead overalls, and I actually really miss them in the summer uh, because I don't wear them in the summer. They just keep the mess off your regular everyday clothes. The mess of the homestead stays on the overalls, but then you come inside, you pop them off. Your clothes are clean, so you don't have to do a ton of laundry. Every day you go out there and do chores, you don't get your clothes that dirty. Just the overalls. Really, really big plus to the overalls. Work. Work? You yeah. gonna go to work? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I did invest this year in a new pair of muck boots. You taking them? I didn't buy a new pair of boots last year. I wore out my mucks the year before and I wasn't ready to commit to a new pair until I really had explored all my boot options. I see. And I literally did take a year to figure out what I was looking for in a boot. Between Muck Lux and all sorts of other brands. I came back to mucks because I liked them the best. 
I like the mugs because they're easy to put on and off, and this year was especially important for that. I'm not bending over and tying any laces. They're waterproof. I have looked at other boots, but it gets so sloppy out there, mucky, poopy, that I need something that's really, really waterproof. And they're comfortable. They don't make half sizes, which was kind of what made me hold off on them for another year. But two pairs of socks works for me. So I wear a little bigger size than I normally would with two pairs of socks. Nice and toasty. So we've had the Arctic before, we've had the wetland. I've liked them all. If you are like me and you normally run hot, <laughs> I don't like the Arctic models as much. They're too much insulation. I like the wetlands. They're warm, but they're not too hot, so usually I don't get too sweaty in them. While Kay's putting her mucks on, you may wonder why I'm not wearing my mucks today. For me, I'm not ready to jump over to the boot season quite yet. I'm still rocking my Cujo Yardwear. These are a brand of shoes. I call these sneakers because I'm from New England. Uh, but they're designed specifically for doing yard work. They're made with people like us in mind, people who are outside working on their homesteads, whether you're feeding chickens, weed whacking, or you know taking care of the pastures. Whatever it is, if you don't want to wear boots, if you're just in the mood to throw a pair of sneakers on, or if you call them tennis shoes like people in Pennsylvania, I don't play tennis. Cujo Yardwares, I've been really impressed by how durable they are while still being lightweight on my feet. I don't like wearing a heavy duty work boot. I like something that's a little bit more lightweight. One of the coolest features about them, the material that they use up front, I have been stepped on by a cow while wearing these. Still hurt. <laughs> but didn't even break a toenail, didn't break the skin. So I've had mine now for a whole season and they've held up. I haven't worn any holes in them. Really nice shoe, cool company who supports Homesteady. If you don't wanna be wearing the boots but you're looking for a good Homestead sneaker, try out the Cujos. And cool thing about Cujo, they actually directly support Homesteady. They've provided our community with our own promo code so you get a special discount through Cujo if you use our promo code, which we'll have below. The next category on our gear of the year list, livestock. See all them chickens running around. Every morning and every evening, if you own chickens, you have to come outside open up the chicken door, let them out. In the evening, you have to go outside, close up the coop. Well, not if you have our next item. Last year, we installed a Brincy Chick Eco. Uh, you can watch that video right there, the installation of it. Uh, this little item is awesome. Automatically opens and closes your chicken coop door for you. And you don't even have to program anything. It has a, a little sensor on it that detects daylight. So as the sun goes down, it shuts the door, and when the sun comes up, it opens the door. If you want to learn more about it, watch that video. If you buy that item for whoever does the chicken chores in your family, they will love you for it, trust me. Something I love when we're waiting for a birth on the farm, whether it's goat kids or calves, are our wise cams. Austin knows much more about them though, so I don't think I should talk about them. <laughs> you know what's important. Well, they work. You, they allow you, you to... You set them up and then I can check on my phone to see what's going on in the barn. Honeybee has been on calf watch now for days. Because yes. we're really nervous. It's her first time. And so we want to check on her all night. But we don't want to come out to the barn no. every night, all night. So instead, when you wake up in the middle of the night, pop out your phone, check your wise cam. You can take a look at the barn. You can even listen in. There's a microphone. Right now, this week, Black Friday, it's like $35 for one of these things. So we have a couple up in our barn. They plug directly into your electric. You do need to have Wi-Fi to the barn. If you don't have Wi-Fi to the barn, watch that video. I show you how to get Wi-Fi to your barn. But these things have been a lifesaver, literally a lifesaver, because they have showed us at times when things have gone wrong, whether it's chicks, that are too cold, if it's pigs that are going into birth and we need to be there for it, if it's a calving that's eminent, they are awesome and they're cheap and they just make life on the homestead easier. I know you're gonna be happy if you put a couple wise cams up in the barn. This was 
actually one of our years past Gear of the Year items. I'll have a link at the end of this video so you can watch the older series we've done on this. This was a great one, but we won't talk about it today. You can go and watch that older video. things for training the calves have been these rope halters. Uh, I use them for the cows. Very adjustable, easy to work with, very durable. Uh, they're lightweight. We don't leave them on them all the time because it's a, a lead attached. But they have the, the metal hardware on that. So when you're training a calf, and they don't want to move with you, you give it a little bit of pressure and it tightens under the chin with that metal clip there. And as soon as they take a step forward, it releases that pressure. So it teaches them to lead so quickly. And then I don't need to buy different size halters for everybody, halters and lead ropes. They're all in one. With these smaller cows, you have different size calves. A teeny tiny little calf, you're gonna to need to buy a teeny tiny halter for, a bigger size calf, and a bigger halter for. These are nice, you just need the one size, so when we're calf sharing, when she's tiny, this was the one we used. When she's getting bigger, I can use the same one. Nice, did you catch that? I did catch that. That was smooth. This always goes under the chin, so don't have it coming up around the head. The part that squeezes is right under the chin. Oh, what a good girl. What a good girl. My friends will attest to this being true. I'm not really a tool guy. I am not a handy man. But when you have a homestead, you absolutely need to have the right tools to fix everything that breaks all the time. And so the next category, we're gonna cover a couple different tools that are musts for a homestead that have gotten me out of so much trouble. The first thing I wanna talk about is about the handiest little toolkit you could possibly get somebody or yourself for the homestead. And this is a Winchester screwdriver kit. Now you're thinking, all right, screwdriver kit, why do I need to pay for some fancy screwdriver? Uh, doesn't just one screwdriver do the trick? No, that's the problem. When you have a homestead that your father-in-law built the barn 30 years ago, and your buddy came and helped build a cow milking stanchion last year, the tractor is German made, and the mower is American made, the watering system uses radiator clamps, the feeders you built are all falling apart. The point is, there's like a million different screws that you have to mess with on your homestead. Anything that breaks, I guarantee you, it's going to have a different screw than the next thing that breaks, and that's why this kit is so nice. Winchester makes it, it's made for like gunsmiths, it has every little screwdriver head you could possibly imagine. Have you ever even seen a bit like that? I don't know what it's for, but someday I'll need it. This thing, it's like, uh, am I gonna like drill a hole with that? I will have to at one point in my homesteading career. There's like four different size star bits. I didn't even know there were four different size star bits in existence. One is so small, it just looks like it's a little round thing, but it's actually a teeny tiny star bit. Plus a screwdriver that you can snap that into. This kit has gotten me out of so much trouble. There have been so many times that something broke on the homestead and I went to fix it and I grabbed a regular screwdriver and oh, it doesn't fit, the bit's too small, it's a star bit, it's a square bit. This saved me so many times, allowed me to fix things. When something breaks on the homestead, you have got to get it fixed ASAP. You can't run down to the hardware store because if you do, the pig's escaped and the pig's gone. So this little kit, it is an awesome present. Right now, Black Friday on Amazon, you can get it for, I think it's like 17 bucks. Just, I love this thing. Remember when I said wasn't a tool guy, not very handy? That applies also to things that are supposed to run on the homestead, motors. One thing that drives me nuts is when you're going to do a little maintenance on the property, maybe you're going to say weed whack, 
and you grab the weed whacker or the trimmer and you give it a pull and it's not starting and you prime the button and you hate that stuff. Spark plugs gunked up, you gotta clean it. Oh man, is this gasoline mixed or not? Do I have to add oil? How much? I hate that stuff. DeWalt has a new line of battery powered weed whackers. I have a pole saw over there that I use for trimming trees on the homestead. They are awesome. They run off of DeWalt's 20 volt battery system. The same system that my impact drivers, screw guns, sawzalls run off of. That's one of the things I love about this and why I cannot recommend enough. If you wanna get a nice present for some homesteader in your life, get them started with the DeWalt toolkit. Whether it's this bad boy right here, the weed whacker, which I hate weed whacking, I hate lawn work, but you know, if you don't do it, you wind up getting ticks on the kids. I gotta trim those weeds so the kids don't get all ticked up. Pull the trigger, it fires right up. There's no prime in a bubble, there's no pumping, there's no mixing gasoline. You just get the job that you didn't wanna do in the first place done quickly. <laughs> I cannot recommend this thing enough. Super awesome, works great on the homestead. One of the things I like the most about the DeWalt Weed Whacker is it has a quick spool feature. The time it takes to spool a regular Weed Whacker head drives me nuts. This thing, you take the line, you stick it through it, and then it's got a ratchet. You ratchet it in and you're done. Super fast and just another nice feature. I hate weed whacking, so the less time it takes me, just being able to start it instantly and refill it quickly, the better. I actually got the trimmer too. I got the pole trimmer for pruning trees. So for all you permaculturists out there who are like, bro, let the weeds grow. Why are you weed whacking? You gotta prune your trees. Runs off the same battery, extended saw, and pull the trigger and it's all ready to go. This is a tool that I use every single day. I'm about to give Honey Bee, who is currently on calf watch, not calf warning, calf watch. <laughs> um, I'm about to give her a flake of hay. I come over here to the hay bale, and instead of wrestling with this bale and twine, I pop out my Leatherman knife. One, two, nice and easy. I use this to open up feed bags. Gotta have a knife on you on the homestead. I feel like every year I share a different Leatherman knife. I go back and forth with Leatherman knives, what I carry in my pocket, you know, what year. Some years I share like these giant ones that you open up and it's got everything from a saw to a blender. But right now I'm using this, this is the Freestyle CX. It's a small one and I, I like- that's mine. And I like the fact that it's a small knife. It's got one little blade on it. It's got one little teeny set of pliers. And I think it even has, well, no, that's all it has. <laughs> and that's why I like it, because I found with the bigger Leatherman, although it had all those tools on it, it was so clunky to carry around, I just stopped carrying it. This thing, if the knife or the little pair of pliers can't do the job, you're better off just going to the toolbox anyway. So I like keeping that in my pocket. One of the tools I keep on me every single day here on the homestead. Fancy lip. But you probably never use that. I never use that, no. I should use that because I am notorious for losing knives, which is probably why I show a different Leatherman every year. Uh, I'm notoriously bad at using, losing my Leatherman knives when I like lean over and they fall out of my pocket. So I probably should use that little clip more, but I don't. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna head inside and show you the last couple items on the list. They are the more home part of the homestead. <laughs> this is a previous item on our list that our son is 11 and he just loves it. I think if you find something that your 11 year old loves, um, <laughs> pretty good thing to have, especially when it's just something for taking off your boots. But, oh man, it's so nice right now. We'll have a link at the end of this video to the Gear of the Year playlist yeah. so you can watch all our older ones and see all that stuff. Two of my favorite things that I use really frequently in the kitchen. One was actually a wedding gift Austin and I got, so that's 13 years ago. Still going strong, my KitchenAid mixer. Uh, I like the attachments. I love using the grinder. We'll make some of the animal food around here with it. 
any time we want to grind meat to make meatballs. Fantastic to have. Mixer, we use baking, for grinding, for pasta making, all sorts of things. The KitchenAid mixer. The next I've had for probably four or five years now, and we use a lot, is the Instapot. When we have our fresh raw milk, we'll make yogurt out of it, which is a little starter in there. Makes a nice batch of yogurt. We we'll use it to make rice, soups, any of those really tough meats we get, so shanks from the lambs or the venison, it's really nice done in the Instapot. Or if we have some old stew chickens, to put them in the Instapot, uh, within an hour, nice tender, a little chicken stock and some chicken soup. Well, if you've made it this far in the video, then this last item might be a perfect one for you. If you made it this far, you obviously love homesteading the videos that we make. You can get yourself a beautiful brand new, this is the Ladybug shirt. Homesteady Ladybug shirt. You'll see there's, there's the Homesteady logo. The reason I wanted to mention our Homesteady swag in this video is because I'm especially proud of it. We work with a family, they're homesteaders, the Parsons family. They have a little homestead and they support themselves on their homestead by, by making clothes for different companies. If you have a company that needs clothing made, use the Parsons. They do an incredible job. I'm so proud of our clothes because of their quality. They choose the best quality shirts. They're durable, but they still feel really, really nice. Uh, Aaron's a master at getting the artwork on the shirts to be durable, but also to feel good. So the amount of paint and the type of paint he uses, he actually picks himself based off what's comfortable, but what will also last. I'm really proud of our stuff, thanks to the Parsons. Uh, so if you wanna get somebody or yourself a gift this season, a nice Homesteady shirt, they have tearaway tags, which is my favorite. <laughs> I hate tags. Quick reminder, everything we have listed below, if you're looking for some of the items we talked about today, they're all affiliate links. If you purchase anything through our affiliate links, we make a small amount of money for referring you to the product, but it doesn't cost you a penny extra and it helps us make these videos. So thank you so much for every year watching our Gear of the Year series. Check out previous year's Gear of the Year, that's a tongue twister, series by clicking right there.